एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम that there is something called as retrosynthesis in chemistry meaning that you can reverse a reaction or you can look at the product and design your own synthesis with the knowledge of uh, reaction mechanisms which we have got it can be applied to the method of retrosynthesis also hi i'm dr manika and in this lecture we will be talking about reaction mechanisms in further detail extending it to some other type of reactions such as ring closure ring formation or ring opening or cyclization reactions and synthesis of few important drug molecules also for more information on such topics such as stereochemistry reaction mechanisms you can follow our book by s chand publishing the link to which is given in the description box below the first part of our lecture will be oxidation reduction reactions because whenever oxidation happen the something is getting oxidized and other one is obviously getting reduced so they often go hand in hand the other ones will be the ring opening reactions that where you have a ring already and it gets get opened up under the certain set of conditions the third one will be the cyclic cyclization reactions where the ring aliphatic chain is converted into a cyclic structure and we will also talk about the synthesis of few important drugs which we take in our day to day life so as to just apply what kind of reaction mechanisms which we have discussed till now can actually be applied somewhere or not so coming to the first one oxidation and reduction reactions so here one of the substrate loses electron while the other one gains it the one which loses is getting oxidized the other one which gains is getting reduced and hence the product of the reaction the foremost example of oxidation is oxidation of alkyl benzenes and it can be easily uh, accomplished in the laboratory with the help of a very common reagent or a household reagent in fact kemenophore is also used as a disinfectant but the one which we use in the laboratory is usually a concentrated form either in the acidic or in the basic medium so whatever alkyl chain is present on the benzene chain is gone or uh, is oxidized to benzoic acid provided benzylic hydrogen is also is always there here you can see there are three benzylic hydrogen atom okay there there are two benzylic hydrogen atom here there are two another two set of two so both of them are getting oxidized and you are getting this molecule in this case here where there is a tertiary butyl group attached here no product is no such reaction is happening because there is no benzylic hydrogen atom so benzylic hydrogen presence of the benzylic hydrogen atom is the key requirement for the formation of the benzoic acid not only this but also under the presence of kmn4 benzyl alcohol or benzaldehyde can also be oxidized to the corresponding benzoic acid right if you have two oxidizable group present ortho to each other you will get orthothalic acid or the other ones other isomers are also possible so the usual oxidation reduction reactions which are encountered in al aliphatic compounds are reversible also that is you can oxidize an alkane to alcohol to aldehyde to carboxylic acid and it can also be reduced in the reversible way the most common reagents which we used for the oxidation are pyridinium chlorochromate chromic acid and potassium dichromate and the most common reducing agents which we use are lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride esters acid halides can further be reduced to aldehydes or ketones under the appropriate set of the conditions or appropriate reducing agents being used in the laboratory another set of example of oxidation is oxidation of alcohols to uh, carboxylic acids directly by using chromium trioxide in the presence of aqueous sulfuric acid and acetone as the solvent here you can see that this aliphatic molecule primary alcohol is getting converted into carboxylic acid directly without getting without any cumbersome method in the similar way the secondary alcohol can be converted into ketone by using 
this process. This is known as Jones oxidation and it is a uh, important method to convert alcohols into the corresponding carbonyl compounds. Uh, similarly, carboxylic acids can be reduced to alcohols or selective reduction of the carbonyl group can occur in the presence of carboxylic group by using reagents such as sodium borohydride and hydrogen over a solid catalyst, hydrogen platinum. Here you can see that CO group is selectively reduced with carboxylic group getting intact. So this is a method of selective reduction process. Here using lithium aluminium hydride, however, you can see that both the carbonyl groups of carbonyl compound as well as the uh, carboxylic group were getting reduced. So this is not a selective, this is a powerful reducing agent. However, by using hydrogen in the presence of sodium borohydride, you can accomplish selective reduction. Important oxidation process of carbonyl compounds is bare villiger oxidation where a ketone or a cyclic ketone can be converted into corresponding ester or a lectone. Lectones are cyclic esters in the presence of peroxide. So peroxide basically uh, abstracts the hydrogen from the alpha carbon atom which leads to the formation of the uh, ketone. So in this process, peroxide protonates oxygen of the carbonyl group, which makes it more susceptible to the attack by peroxide, leading to the formation of the corresponding ester or the lactone. Bayer Villiger oxidation is a key reaction in the conversion reactions or synthesis of higher molecules because it rapidly converts a carbonyl group into a ester moiety. Another important oxidation process is Oppenier oxidation, which is popular and as popular as Oppenier is the reversible reaction which is Meerwein Pondroff Wurler reduction. So in the presence of acetone and aluminium isopropoxide, secondary alcohols are oxidized to the corresponding ketones. Whereas the reversible reaction, this ketone is reduced to back to the corresponding alcohol. So this is also another important oxidation reduction or redox reaction in the organic chemistry. Oxidation also happens with the KMnO4. For example, if we have a branched or a long chain olefinic molecule, it can be easily oxidized to the corresponding carbonyl compounds. So for example, if this olefin is going oxidation with KMnO4. The carbon which bears the hydrogen atom will be converted into the carboxylic, uh, carboxylic product, whereas the other one where there is no hydrogen atom will be converted into the ketonic molecule. Here again you can see since there is a presence of hydrogen atom, this will be converted into the carboxylic acid product and this will be converted into carbon dioxide because there is no alkyl group present over here. Then another important reaction which we usually see in the case of carbohydrate chemistry is malabarate reaction. Here it is, react, it is the reaction of vicinal diols with periodic acid with the formation of a cyclic transition state and the products are two carbonyl compounds. This reaction is also used to determine the length of the carbon chain in saccharides and it's an important versatile reaction. Similar reaction which is also used in the carbohydrate chemistry and any and many other organic mechanism mechanistic pathways is ozonolysis where a reaction of an olefin with ozone produces corresponding carbonyl compounds. Now let's see uh, the few reduction reactions. In the, in the reduction reaction of carbonyl compounds using zinc amalgam and HCl, we get the saturated carbon chain and this reaction is known as Clemenson reduction. Whereas in the Wolf-Kishner reduction, similar product is obtained but the reaction occurs with the presence of hydrazine and a corresponding hydrazone is formed as an intermediate. It's not an intermediate, it's one of the product which on further reaction with potassium hydroxide under elevated temperatures gives back the saturated carbon atom. So this Clemenson reduction and Wolf-Kishner reduction are easy method of replacing a carbonyl group with a methylene group. So this is another important uh, deoxygenation or the reduction reaction in organic chemistry.
Now let's look at uh, the other the, one of the other reaction which we discussed in the previous slide also, which was the reverse of uh, Penier oxidation is which is MPV or Mervyn Ponder of Verde reduction. This we have just discussed in the previous slide also. Now another set of the reactions after oxidation and reduction reactions which we encounter in organic chemistry is cyclization reaction. Cyclization reactions are mostly pericyclic in nature. For example, look at the Diels-Alders reaction over here. The major reactants of a Diels-Alders reaction are an electron rich species and an electron deficient species that is a diene and a dienophile. So the dienophile reacts with the diene in such a way that a cyclic structure is possible. This reaction proceeds in a single step via the formation of an aromatic transition state and the product is the cyclic compound. This reaction is favored by electron withdrawing groups on dienophile, dienophile because it will make it even more electron deficient and electron donating groups on diene because it will make it even more electron rich. So a dienophile will easily attack the diene in such a way. To explain this even more, we will look at the few examples. Look at the few dienes and the dienophiles over here. You can see that two products can be possible in this case. One, when the electron deficient di dienophile attacks the diene from this particular carbon, which usually, so when the attacks happen at this particular carbon, you get this product and this one is not observed. So the orientation of the diene and dienophile in such a way that the electron poor dienophile will attack at the electron rich center of the diene. Similarly, here also the attack will happen from this center at the electron rich center, not this center. So obviously this particular product is not formed and this product is, these are the preferable or the favored products. So out of the two, the ones which give the, which are present in the proper orientation of diene and dienophile are the preferred products. Another important ring formation reaction occurs by intramolecular fissure esterification. As the name suggests esterification, that means ester is getting formed. Cyclic esters are also known as lactones and the product depends upon at which position you have the hydroxyl group present. If the hydroxyl group is present at beta position, you get a beta lactone. If it's present at the gamma position, you get a gamma lactone and so on and so forth. The, so here, as you can see, the hydroxyl group is present at the delta position. So this one is a delta lactone. So depending upon the position of hydroxyl group, cyclic esters may be called as beta, gamma or delta lactones respectively. So look at another substrate where hydroxyl group is present at gamma position. So the product will be a gamma lactone. So fissure esterification which is happening intramolecularly is a great way of formation of lactones. Another important cyclization reaction is happens whenever aldol condensation happens in an intramolecular way. Look at the substrate like this. In this case, you can see that uh, you have two carbonyl groups in the substrate. So in the presence of a base such as NaOH, under aqueous set of the conditions, we know aldol condensation will, will occur. Okay, so base will abstract either of the two alpha hydrogen atoms, it can abstract the hydrogens alpha over here um, or over here. So if it abstracts the alpha hydrogen over this carbon, then there is less possibility to get a cyclic product and also this will not be as basic as this one. So in the, in the aldol condensation of this reactant, in the presence of the base, this alpha hydrogen will be abstracted and once this is abstracted, this generates a carbanion which is resonance stabilized with the carbonyl group over here, which can now attack the second carbonyl group in the molecule itself to give you a five-membered ring structure, which under dehydration conditions will give a 
cyclopropenone molecule. So this is an example of intramolecular aldol condensation is an important way of cyclization. So just a way to recapitulate or to apply. Let's see this molecule over here in the presence of the acetone can give you something new relative to what we have started till now. Yes, it can. You can see that here nitrogen can act as a nucleophile and this terminal can act as an alkyl halide. So, nucleophile, alkyl halide, nucleophilic substitution can easily occur. So, here it can attack this carbon over here leaving to the le leading to the leaving of the bromide. So, the product which could be possible over here is so, the product which could be possible over here is N-methyl amine. It's a cyclic amine. So, this is a cyclization reaction and the mechanism can be said to be an SN2. So, this is an intramolecular SN2 or an intramolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction leading to cyclization. So, you see how we can apply the basics of reaction mechanism to do any sort of uh, reaction in organic chemistry. So, with this we have to we have come to an end of this lecture where we talked about production and oxidation reactions of various kinds leading to the formation of carbonyl compounds, reduction of those carbonyl compounds back to the uh, alkanes or uh, alkanes to we have got into the oxidation products and various sorts of cyclization reactions. In the second part of our lecture, we will be talking more about this these, these, these types of reaction mechanisms. For more information on such topics such as stereochemistry reaction mechanisms, you can follow our book by S. Chan Publishing, the link to which is given in the description box below. Please keep liking, subscribing and sharing our channel for more such videos. Thank you. All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.